our day today with speaking drills. So what are speaking drills? So what are speaking drills? Speaking drills are speaking exercises used to improve our speaking abilities. Why are they important? Well, they help with enunciation, clarity, posture, and create good habits. Um, the better you are at speaking drill, the better chances you are of winning a speaker award. So as you know, in debate, um, when you go to tournaments, the judges isn't only basing you on your arguments, but how well you speak and present yourself in that round. And that's why we do something called speaking drills, because you are being scored on this. And the higher you score, the more trophies you win and the higher you rank during the tournament. So these are just like practices that we're going to start like every practice with. So we can, um, you know, warm up, <laughs> like get our um, endurance kind of down. Because like when you are speaking in a tournament, you're going to be talking for a long time. You're going to get tired. So the reason why we do speaking drills is so like you can kind of build up that endurance. So you can like speak for eight minutes long during the whole speech. Okay. So how speaking drills work, I need everybody to get something to read. So it can be, um, if you receive the evidence pack already, you can read that or just get like a book you have to read for school, or you can pick up like, a, um, you can Google like a New York times magazine article really quick. So it's just anything you can read off of. So I'll give you guys like one minute, just pick up a book so we can begin our speaking drills. Actually, let me go grab a book really quick. All right, when you have when you have your book in front of you, just put a thumbs up in the chat. Or not in the chat in the reactions box. Okay, you got one thumbs up. Okay. It looks like everybody. Everybody's ready to go. Okay. So for our first speaking drill, it's called forwards and the if you can't do a speaking drill right now for whatever reason, it's totally fine. Just make sure you like keep track of how like this all works. So that way when you do have a space where you can like speak and project your voice, then you're able to do these on your own time. But um, for the people who can, I would take off, turn off your mics. Not sorry, not turn it off. Unmute yourselves <laughs> when we do this drill so I can make sure you guys are actually doing it. Um, but yeah, so for our first drill, we're just gonna be going forwards. And what that means is that you're going to be speaking as if you were like presenting your debate round. So everybody would have to stand up because we don't sit when we debate. We have to stand up and it gets us in a good practice. Um, so if you can turn on your video, please do so too. So I can make sure you guys are doing it right. Because if you do do the speaking drills, like if you create bad habits, then that eventually carries on into your round and then that hurts your speaker point. Do you want us to so stand up? Yes, please. So stand up. And if you can turn on your videos, just to make sure you guys are on it. And also unmute your mics if you are able to do so. So I know it's gonna sound a little bit weird, but like just imagine when there's 30 kids in a room during practices and the like the classroom next to us is so confused. It's totally fine. You guys will get the hang of it the more we do this. So you're just gonna be reading this as if you're presenting it to a judge, just straight down. That's why it's called forwards, and just reading it. Text that is. So for example, I would be like, assuming the dishes are in two sets of equal qualities, which means which one is more, the question is easy. You can see it's that it contains the dishes in set B, and then I would keep speaking for those two minutes. Is that, I feel like I'm speaking a little bit too fast, so I apologize for that. But for this first speaking drill round, I'm gonna set my timer for two minutes. You guys are just gonna be reading off of your book, your whatever you have in front of you as if you were presenting into a debate round. So you're gonna be standing up straight, you're gonna be projecting your voice. It's okay if you're a little bit loud. That's the whole point of it, okay? Anyone have any questions before we begin? You can just unmute your mic and say it. Do we have so we're to talk to the speak out loud? Sorry, um, um, sorry, Jordan, did you have a question? Huh? Did you have a question? Yeah, I asked if we were, um, it sounded like we were all speaking at the same time. That we were doing yes. standing and speaking at the same time. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, we're all going to be speaking at the same time. That way no one's put on the spot. Um, I'm going to set my timer for two minutes, and then when it's over, I'll just put in the chat. I have a question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have to, like, read quickly? No, you do not have to read quickly. Um, speaking fast and debate is, like, a strategic method, so there's no advantage to speaking. Well, there's a slight advantage to speaking faster. But um, it's obviously like a stylistic type of choice. So if you don't feel comfortable reading fast, you don't have to. You'll build that up eventually. So just read it like to your best of your abilities as if you were presenting. If you cannot speak right now, that's totally fine. Um, so everybody stand up if you can. Um, you're going to be standing up. You're going to be reading. And you're going to be unmuting your mics so we can all hear each other at the same time. Any last questions before we begin? All right, two minutes starting. Yeah, go. She was a little girl. Michelle Robinson. They didn't know about the rounds were doing the best. Great. They're saying the individual basis on the CEO sex CEO field. The masters and 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 the masters we hit the wall. I have to get on the middle of all right, that's it. That's the first drill. All right, cool, cool, cool. That was a smooth transition. Look at that. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, also, just as reiterate, if, if for every reason you cannot participate, it's totally fine. Just like do this on your own time. Um, for the people who can, thank you guys for participating. We're going to move on to our second drill. So our second drill for today is called backwards, which means that you're not reading the words themselves backwards, but merely the order they appear in the sentence backwards. So if I have a sentence, which alternative is more probable? I'm going to be reading probable more is alternative which. So I'm just going to keep going backwards all the way up the page. So you're going to start at the bottom and then read your way up. Does anyone have any questions? All right, two minutes starting now. Because of what we do, memory of Revolution in America, no, I'm not in the I <laughs> 
so we just have one more to go and then we are done for today our last one is called taco so what this one means is that you're going to insert the word taco in between each word so if I have the sentence, which oh, alternative wow. is more probable, I'm going to insert the word taco. So it's going to be which taco alternative taco is taco more taco probable taco. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. And the reason why we do this drill is because um, sometimes when we read in debate, especially as we move into like varsity and we start to read really, really fast, um, sometimes our eyes move faster than we're able to physically speak the words. And that leads to like a lot of mumbling. So the reason why we input the word taco, because this forces our brain or a mouse to like speak more slower and to like become more in sync because now we're forced to step back and actually, you know, read the words more in depth as we go. So that's why we do the stroke. All right. Okay, cool. So we have two minutes. Let me stretch that. And you guys are free to go. Taco, I taco, 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 all right, we're done. That's it. <laughs> Thank you guys for participating. We finished our first speaking drills of the school year. Um, thank you all for participating. Oh yes, Cam, please meet your mics. Um, um, yeah, so meet your mics if you still have them on. And we are going to be moving beyond. Yeah, so um, if anyone's tired from these speaking drills, that means they're working. Um, this is only like three fourths of the way through a whole speech because it's six minutes of these speaking drills. You know, one AC, like the constructive speech, is actually eight minutes. So you're only like three fourths of the way there. <laughs> so this is why we do the speaking drills so you can build up that endurance so you won't be like winded during the round. And also, it helps with like a bunch of other stuff too, but we'll go into that throughout the year. 
Okay, so we are going to do a little debate activity. This is um, going to be a little bit, it's a little bit interactive so we can get to know each other and also so you guys can get a little like taste into like the debate world. So this activity is called, I couldn't disagree with you more. So we're gonna start the game by making a statement. The statement can be ridiculous or fantastical. Um, like, you know, the sorting hat should make college decisions or, sorry, I'm trying to move the bar or to go against common sense, like the water should be replaced by soda, the statement can go, yeah, you know. So we're gonna make a statement, right? And then I'm gonna break you guys into some breakout rooms. Or actually, I don't think I need to do that. I'm gonna keep you guys here. And, okay, so this activity was made for a non-Zoom meeting, but we're gonna make it work. So I'm actually gonna go down the line of the participants chat, so, we are going to start with, who's first? Jackie's first. So you're gonna make a random statement. And then the person underneath Jackie is Adam, you're next. You're gonna disagree with Jackie's statement. So you're gonna say, I couldn't disagree more and then give a reason. And then the next person in this case would be Corey. You're going to say, So basically this whole thing is just a chain of people disagreeing with themselves, <laughs> like disagreeing with the person before them. And I'm gonna read out the names on the participants chat so you guys know who's gonna go next. So if I say like, I believe that all dolphins should be allowed to be house pets now, the person next to me is going to be like, actually I couldn't disagree more because dolphins deserve to be free and in the wild, right? And the person after that, they're like, actually, I can disagree more because dolphins make great pets. And then we're going to keep going like that. And you guys are going to have, instead of one minute, I'll give you guys 30 seconds to give me a speech. And then we're going to have a little poll from the whole group. And then you guys are going to vote to see which side you agree with. Does that make sense? Oh, uh, wait. So do I just make up the statement? That's it? Or? Yeah. So um, we're going to oh, do like yeah. three people at a time. Well, actually, we'll do four, so it'll be even, like, two and two. Okay. So our first group of four is going to be Jackie, Corey, Adam, and... Who's next? Adam and Dylan. You guys are going to be the first four. The order is going to be Jackie, Corey, Adam, Dylan. So Jackie, you're going to have the original statement. Corey's then going to disagree with that. Adam's then going to disagree with Corey. And then Dylan's going to disagree with Adam. Does that make sense? Okay. One question. Yes. Do I disagree? So I disagree with the statement prior or to the original statement? Prior. Okay. I also, I do I have to make, oh, uh, Corey, you oh. can go. Okay. So like once I'm done disagreeing and I say my statement, does my mm -hmm. statement have to be related to the person before me at all or can it be completely different? That's up to you. You can either directly like refute it or, well, actually, you know what? That will make it easier. Yeah, just directly disagree. Okay. Uh, do I have to? Oh, do I have to make my case, or do I just say it? You're gonna have thirty seconds to give your case. Wait, but I'm the person who's making the statement, though. So, so I make my statement. Oh and then wait, I make never my mind. Case. That's Jackie. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You're you're gonna get thirty seconds to present your case, and then who's after you? Then I said Corey is gonna get thirty seconds to like disagree with you, and then Adam's gonna have thirty seconds to disagree with. Corey, and then Dylan's going to have 30 seconds to disagree with Adam. Does that make sense? So, wait, I, I just want to make it clear. I, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. um, so I, I started off with a statement, and then I make my case, and then I just let the other person go. Yes. It's, okay. Just make your case. Okay. Do, do you need a statement, or do you have one? Uh, I think I have one. Uh, yeah, do we just start now? Or? Yeah, let me set a timer for you. You have 30 okay. seconds. I'll, I'll give you a 10 second warning. Okay. All right, 30 seconds, go. Uh, I think context should be banned because uh, um, having to see somebody putting on their context is kind of disgusting, low key. Um, seeing somebody like go up to their eyes, pull something out of their eyes and not knowing what it is, is very disturbing. Uh, that's really it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Oh, I re sorry, I was muted when I said ten seconds. So you were you oh. like perfectly timed it. My bad. Oh really? Oh okay. 
Yeah, so that was good. Okay. All right, and then... Like, just to be clear, um, does it have to make sense? Or, like... No, it doesn't. Okay. It can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> okay. okay. I couldn't disagree with you more. In fact, why, why should contacts be banned? Because some people... They can't bear to have glasses. They just look ugly with glasses. Glasses, you know, like they may have a big old nose and their glasses just go ugly with their face. And another thing is, like, most people they're not gonna take contacts out in front of you. So, like, you can just leave them be. They'll just do it at home. It's not like people just go up to you and take them out of their eyes. Like, wait, do I make a statement? After I'm done? Oh my bad. I keep forgetting I'm on mute. I'm so sorry, you guys. Um. Okay, I'll give you 10 seconds to finish. Okay. Um, okay I don't really have anything else. <laughs> All right, cool. Sorry about that. All right, next person, I think it was Adam. I couldn't disagree more. Due to the fact that I believe that having contacts is something that is just much more easy to use and therefore is much more beneficial to the user. So because if you're saying it's just because someone has an ugly nose, I think that it's, it's just a lot harder, actually, to um, have, all, have all these things. So my statement is that contacts are very helpful. All right. Thank you. And last but not least, we have... Who is next? I think... Dylan, right? Okay. Um, I think that... Oh, I think the question should be whether... Um, glasses or contacts are better. I think the, the, the question should be... should being able to put contacts in public because the case you were making was that it, it is, um, it affects you seeing some, someone put contacts in. So I think that it should be whether you, you're able to be able to put them on in public and you can just not look at them while they're putting in contacts. All right, I think that was it. Yeah, it's very All right, thank you guys for that. We're gonna do a quick, quick vote. So if everybody can go to the participant section on Zoom, and do you guys see the yes, no options on there? All right, so if you, if you agree with the contacts um, side, you're gonna put yes. If you agree with the glasses side, pick no. Are we allowed to vote? No, we'll keep you guys out, yeah. So contacts is green, glasses is no. All right, looks like we have contacts as our winners for this round. Cool, cool, cool. All right, you guys are good. You guys can turn off the chat. And we're going to move on to the next four people. So let me see. Who do we have next? I'm just going to randomly pick people. So we're going to have Enzo. You're going to be number one. Nice. Jordan, you're going to be number two. Kennedy, number three, and Marissa, number four. So the order, the number I just gave you is going to be your order that you're going to be speaking in. Um, and then Enzo, would you like to pick a statement or do you want me to pick one for you? Oh, I have one, but um, should I do one that's a little more controversial or more of a fact? Um, whatever you want to do, as long as it's school appropriate. Okay. Um, All right. Let me the, United States, the United there States should create a space force that's outside of the military or army or air force because back in back in world war ii when the united states originally formed the air force it was part of the army and created some tactical errors making the germans have a tactical Sounds advantage like for many years and they, because they used it as infantry they again like made many tactical errors and almost lost many crucial battles all right in the war I Thank completely you. disagree. Is that last question? Mm -hmm. I, can, I completely disagree because um, people aren't meant to sit in chairs. You're supposed to stand in your own legs because that's what we have them for. If we don't, if we sat in chairs all the time, we will become stupid. And we need to not be stupid. We need to sit. I need to cut you off. You have 10 seconds. No, it's okay. Um, wait, I'm sorry. Am I supposed to keep talking or what or was I supposed to? 
I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you 15 seconds to give me like a close in. Oh. Or are you done right now? Yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 totally fine. All right, um, and Kennedy, were you number three? Why I figured out I missed all of that, so it's totally okay. Um, does anyone want to take Kennedy's? Sorry, because I mute unmuted them. Okay, does someone want to take Kennedy's spot for this round? Anyone can get any? Okay. I was, I don't, I wasn't clear of the oh, wait. Was the statement about chairs or about space? <laughs> space. Oh, okay. So the first one, I think it was, um, we need a space force outside of the military. And then Jordan disagreed. So now you're disagreeing with Jordan. So I think that we do, I couldn't agree, disagree with you more, but I think we do need a space force outside of the U.S. Because, oh no, we, we do, yeah because uh, we don't really know anything. We don't know that much about space and I think it would be beneficial to the science community and all of us in general to know where we are and what we're doing here on earth and expand Ten that seconds. knowledge. So it would be really helpful to not just us, but to everybody around the world to be able to know that by setting up a space station. Great, cool, 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 thank you. And we have one more person, number four. Um. Marissa, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, go. Um. I actually agree with that person. What's the name? Because um, I think it would actually be helpful to actually talk to other people outside of the military. Okay. Ten seconds. Um, I do agree with them. All right, thank you, Marissa. Um, we're going to be moving on to the next one. Um, let me see who has not gone yet. So we have Vic, you're going to be number one. Zamiel, um, pronounce, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but you're going to be number two. And also you can correct me at any time. Who has not gone? Sayla, you're going to be number three. And Gavin, you're going to be number four. All right, does anyone not know their numbers? Okay, number one, I believe it was Vic. Do you have a statement? Oh, wait, oh, I'm so sorry. We totally forgot we didn't vote. So, sorry guys, we're gonna vote to see who actually won that. So if you believe that we need a space force outside the military, you're gonna say yes. If you don't think we need a space force outside the military, you're gonna say no. And you guys can place your votes in the participants chat. All right, it looks like we have a majority for, yes, we do need a Space Force outside the military. So that side actually won. All right, we're gonna be moving on to the next four people. Vic, do you have your statement? Uh, sure, yeah. All right, you have 30 seconds starting now. Uh, human cloning should be legal. Is that how this works? Yeah, you have 20 seconds to explain why. Oh, human cloning should be legal because that'll allow for better human transplants, like with lungs and livers and your heart, in case something goes wrong. Uh, it would be beneficial to everyone. And the black market for lungs and stuff would uh, probably go down by a lot. Okay, thank you. Um, number two, who's number two? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, go. I couldn't disagree with you more because why do you need two, like, why do you need two of the same people? 
and you said that it will help the black market. Why are you supporting, um, you know, something illegal? But my thing is that I disagree in that killing Coney shouldn't be legal. Yeah, um, seven seconds. Um, I don't know what else to say. It's really fine. <laughs> Good. Um, so if we read number three, I think it was Sayla. Are you ready? Yep. Right, um, and go. Um, I couldn't disagree with you more. I feel like if we do have an extra clone of people, a lot more would get done. And if we, if this law does pass, it wouldn't be illegal to put it on the black market. You have 15 seconds. Um, I really don't know what else to say. All right, thank you. And we have number four. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, 30 seconds, go. I couldn't disagree with you more. I think that human cloning should be illegal um, because our earth is already overpopulated and we don't need more and more people. Also, it will lead to like a lack of sense of individuality while if people keep getting cloned. And then also, let's say a clone commits a crime. If they have the same fingerprints, you won't be able to distinguish who committed the crime, the real person or the clone. And um, 10 seconds. So overall, I just think you shouldn't be allowed to clone, clone humans because it presents a whole bunch of issues. All right, thank you. Um, this is actually really good. You guys all had your points ready to go and you guys were just like pushing them out. All right, so for our next voting, if you think that we should clone people, you're gonna vote yes. If you think we should not, vote no in the chat. Not the chat, the participants. Yeah, and we can debate, uh, we can touch back on this stuff like throughout the year. This is not the only time we're gonna do like rallying like debates like that. So keep, remember this topic for later. And it looks like, oh, or is it split? No. Okay, it looks like we should not clone people has actually won. So congrats to them. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so we're gonna move on. Thank you guys for participating in this activity. So we're gonna actually look up, so as you guys know, oh wait, before we answer, I'm moving on to the last. Does anyone have any last thoughts about like this activity? Or does anyone want to comment as to why we do this activity? All right, cool. Well, it just sounds like a closing statement as to why we kind of do this activity. It's just to get us like our improv skills together. And also in debates, sometimes you would agree with what the affirmative or negative is saying, but you have to go against them because like that's how kind of debate works. This is just saying like it's getting used to one improving thinking on your feet. So even if you like are not ready to like debate this, you have to think of something to say. Also, we do this activity because um, even if we do agree with them, you have to disagree because that's how like debate works. So it's just like finding ways to disagree even when you do agree with them. Does that make sense? So now we're gonna move on to what makes up an affirmative argument. So as you guys know in debate, there are two sides, there's the affirmative and negative. So for now, we're gonna focus on the affirmative because that's like the main side of debate. So we're gonna look up what makes it up. So there are four parts of an affirmative argument. There's inherency, advantages, plain text, and solvency. So we're gonna start by looking at our inherency. So inherency and status quo. So status quo is the existing state of affairs, especially regarding social political issues. So in debate, we're like, what's the status quo? It's just, what is the current state of events? So like, what's going on in the world right now? That's the status quo. And then inherency is, what does the world look like now? If the plan is such a good idea, then why is it being done? And why does the app or send parts to the app matter? So as you guys know, like in debate, the affirmative is the side that presents the plan text or the plan in the round. So the inherency is saying like, what is the current state of events that the world is in now that we need this plan? Does that make sense? 
Does anyone have any uh, questions? No, I'm a little confused. Can you explain it again, please? Mm -hmm. So the inherency in status quo, which is basically like, it's laying out, it's, it's painting the picture of what the current world looks like. So it's showing like, what is the bad thing that's going on in the world or the harm that's happening? And why do we need the plan to fix this? So, so it's like before, yeah. So is that the same as like a resolution or is that something different? It's different. It's, it's not proposed, like you're not proposing the plan yet. You're just laying out all the bad things that are currently happening in the world. Okay. So like what is the current either political issues or social issues? Like, um, let me go back to but, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, for example, of the idea, like the topic of police brutality, the inherency or status quo would be that police officers are not being held accountable for that. And then eventually you move on to your plan text and saying this is why we need body cams because it then holds police officers accountable for their actions. Does that make sense? So it's like before we get to the plan, we're just laying out all the bad things that are currently happening in the world. Well, like the bad things relevant to our plan. Okay, so if we if we're F or neg, it would would it depend on that? Would we like Yeah, so this is just for the app side. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so if you're in the neg, you don't have to do this because like the app's already breaking it up. And if you're the app, you're just laying out the current like state of affairs, certain issues. And then eventually you're going to bring your plan text to fix the thing you just talked about. Makes sense. Does anyone else have any other questions? All right, I'm moving on. So, and then it kind of like ties into the advantages of your plan. So advantages are the scenarios that outline the harms. They have the reason to vote AF. You argue that a plan prevents the scenario from happening. Um, so you weigh the impacts of your scenarios against the impacts of the negative arguments. There's also uniqueness. So uniqueness is a description of the status quo. It explains why the um, plan is key to prevent the rest of the scenario from happening. If an app has an inherency card on the top, the advantage might not have the uniqueness card, the inherency evidence in functions of the same way. There's also a link. I know I'm going a little fast, so I'll go more in depth, like in depth as we talk about this, but the link is, um, the link is how inaction causes a scenario to happen. The internal link is how scenarios escalate. You might need multiple of these. It just depends on what happens before the impact occurs and this impact, which is the bad thing that happens as a result of knocking the plan. This includes extinction, structural violence, et cetera. It depends on like what you're arguing. Now that's a lot, so we're gonna break this down a little bit more. <laughs> so an advantage is basically, oh my God, this is point. Advantage is basically the same thing as like the inherency. It just kind of like, it gives more in depth on like where we are. So it tells us like why we should vote for the affirmative, because you know, like there's a ballot up for grabs and then the ballot, like the judges votes for that. So it's just showing the judge why you should vote for the affirmative. Um, Sorry, am I, I feel like I'm confusing. So these are just parts of an advantage. So like the uniqueness, the link, the internal link, the impact, these are all for that one argument, which is an advantage. And then the advantage just lays out the scenario as to what are the bad things that's happening. The uniqueness is showing like, why is that specific to this plan? So for example, if our plan is police body cams, in our advantage, we say that it holds police officers accountable, and that's unique because currently in the status quo, they're not being held accountable. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is the advantage kind of like a reason, like it's giving you a reason? A reason for I, I didn't hear the last part, sorry. Like, is it like a reasoning? Like, is it giving you, like, if someone was to ask you something, you like, give me the advantage? The advantage is it just kind of like a reasoning? Mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah it's, it's basically like the reason like so if someone's like what are some advantages to your plan so like what are the good things that the plan brings out you know and like so like this plan for example of police body cams the advantage is police accountability so that would be one advantage of it another advantage would be 
um, let's see, decrease police violence. That's the second advantage. And then the uniqueness aspect of this is that specifically in the status quo, police officers are not being held accountable. So that's why this plan is specifically unique to the harms of the status quo. And then it links together because um, if we don't hold police officers accountable, that like if we don't have body cameras, then police officers are then gonna still hurt people. Don't worry about internal link, that you'll get more of that in like JV and novice. But then the impact is the overall bad result that can happen. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? All right, no. cool. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, if this is confusing, it will totally make sense once we look at the evidence packet. This is just giving you guys like a general outline. So then once we give our advantage, we then move into the plan text. And this is the single most important thing in the round. If you don't say anything else, make sure you at least say your plan text because if you don't get to your plan text, then you're not debating anything, if that makes sense. Because like the whole point of the app is to present the resolution or the plan. And if you don't do that, then it's like, what are we debating in this round? So if you don't say your plan text, you basically like lose the round. Um, it states why you are giving the speech, why you are arguing what this whole debate is about, and it must be in your first speech. So you cannot bring it up later. It has to be in your first speech. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. So then once we have the plan text, we have solvency. And the solvency is basically how the plan actually solves the scenarios. Um, and the solvency advocate is the reasons to believe that the plan solves the scenario it claims to. So, um, for example, if we have the, if we're still sticking with the body cams example, the solvency mechanisms would be that um, once we enact body cameras, then police officers then become more self-aware. And then you can also have an evidence card that's a solvency card, which says that statistics show that police officers that have body cameras have shown to decrease police violence. So that would be your solvency because you're showing how this plan has actually happened and it actually does solve the problem. Any questions on solvency? All right, cool, cool, cool. Now it's time to apply what we learned using the evidence packet. So I believe it was sent out in an email, but I might be wrong. Does, has anyone received the evidence packet yet? I have. No, I read I a have. good chunk of it. Yeah, I have. Perfect, perfect. Okay. In case anyone has not, I'll post it into the chat. But what we're going to do is I want to break you guys into four breakout rooms. And I want you guys to just look at the app section of the packet. And I want you guys to find me a inherency card, advantage card, solvency card in the plain text. Um, and they're all assigned each breakout room to find that particular cards. We'll come back to the main room and then we'll talk about which cards go in which category. Does that make sense? Okay, wait. So, oh, sorry. So, we have to, so we go into the evidence packs that we were given and then we look mm -hmm. through it to find the what? Oh, the inherency. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to know until I find, I'm going to break you guys into the chats. And then each chat is going to be in charge of finding the evidence cards for each category. So like group one would be in charge of advantage, group two, solvency, group three, plain text, and group four, inherency. And you guys are going to find that with your group. Um, and then when I bring you guys back to the main session, each group is going to share out which cards go in which category. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Any last questions? All right. So this would be a good time to... Pull up your evidence packet. If you haven't found it yet, I'll put a link in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so I can break you guys into breakout rooms. And it's going to be random breakout rooms. Okay, um, let me post the link to the evidence room.
All right, we are back. Thank you guys for waiting. Let me post the evidence packet in the chat real quick. So there it is. And I'm going to open breakout rooms. So you guys are going to be in four rooms. And then I'll just stop by each room to assign you guys. Okay. Also, make sure when you go in your rooms, introduce each other. Um, not introduce each other, but introduce yourselves to each other. And also turn on your cameras if you can. Okay, break rooms opening.
Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're just waiting for everybody else to get here, and we'll talk about talk about cards. Let me share my screen too. All right, guys, let me share my screen. And then we're gonna have one person from each group present what they talked about. So I think everybody should be back. Yes. All right, everybody's pretty much here. So can I have one person from group one? Can you guys read me the tagline and the author's last name and date for the card? Oh, also say what category you had. Uh, I could go. Mm -hmm. Um, hold on, give me one second. Sorry. Um, all right. What? Uh, I. You want me to read the tagline first? Or you want me to read where? What it is first? Um, it's up to you. Oh, I. I. I I'll just do the what it is. Uh, one AC advantage. Uh, police violence is rampant. More people are killed every day by police than are killed in a whole year in other countries. Minority groups, partially black men, are at greater risk. Uh, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but peoples, 19, I think. Uh, yeah, no, what category does this fit in? The, uh, uh, one AC advantage, I think. Okay, okay. cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, Do you find any other cards or just that? Oh, the, there's two more after that. Do, do you want me to say those or? Yeah, sure. If you want to. Okay. Um, one AC advantage. Police violence is a public health issue. The consequences spread throughout communities to create a environment to stress of stress with cascading, I think, cascading uh, mm -hmm. negative health consequences. Edward 19. And then the last one, one AC advantage, police violence is a genocide, a persistent, prevailing, and destructive force, systemic, systemically killing people of color, crump, crumped 19. And, uh, that's, that should be it. Perfect. Thank you. So um, I think I see these are um, advantage cards. And does anyone want to take a guess as to why these are advantage cards? Uh, so Oh, yeah, you can go. My bad. Um, thanks. Um, it would show it shows the harm of what would happen if the affirmative side didn't happen. So, yes. yeah, like yeah, I can't think of another example other than this, but yeah, exactly that. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, totally. Um, so good. It outlines the harms. It shows like what are the good things that, or like what are the. You know, like what would happen if we didn't have this plan? And um, it also shows how this plan would then benefit society. Um, does anyone else want to add on to that? Um, you're using sex to your advantage? Yes, totally. Um, so definitely um, in debate, we have like the evidence packets and these things. They lay out all the like the facts and the statistics totally for you so we can add that on because it does make your argument at the end of the day stronger because you can't really put a debate on pure like analytics or just like if you can't back it up so yeah it was good to... anybody else want to add all right cool so let's move on to group two can i have a representative from group two okay both the groups like which groups are which let me see. Group two, group two, group two. Let me see. Let me see. Let me break your arms. I had to stop checking my screen with the break. Break out. Group two had Marissa, Zamiel, and I apologize, but I pronounced this wrong. JM? Oh my gosh, you got it right. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> All 
All right, you guys are group two. Do you guys want to um, talk about what you guys found and what category you found into? Yeah, I'll present. Mm -hmm. um, so we found that, therefore, we offer the following plan. The United States federal government should require all uniformed office, police officers to wear body cameras and continuously record every encounter. Good. And what category was this in? Um, the AC plan, one AC plan. Good. Yes, it was the plan text. Does anyone want to add yeah, on to why text. this? Yeah, totally. No, it was good. <laughs> Does anyone want to add on to why this is the plan text? Oh, can I say something? Can you answer mm -hmm. question? Yeah, totally. Um, I'm not sure, but I think this is the plan text because this is stating the plan will give the affirmative side where to win. This is the plan on what they would want to implement. No, yeah, that's exactly it. It's literally, it's what the affirmative wants to implement into this round or like what they propose that we should do. So that's what the plan text is. It's just telling you what policy plan we are we believe is good and we should implement on society so that was the plan text good 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 um can i have group three and in group three we have the actually can i just have a solvency group go okay all right so my group unanimously voted except for me to share so um here, all right, so we did, of course, one AC solvency. Um, I'm just going to say who it was by. I'm just going to, uh, it was by a ACLU senior policy analyst. Mm -hmm. And we decided to just come up with a summary of what we ended up reading. So what we, what we ended up reading was that body cams help um, people in the streets protect, protect, help protect the public against police misconduct and helping the police against false accusations of abuse, as well as um, officers who can see, have access to the films afterwards, can see what they, what other people have done wrong or right and change their own behavior. And that means that they might be, tw they might be, if without body cams, they'd be twice as likely to use force as other officers who would, which means that police mis misconduct would eventually and, and w would go down. Good. Okay, cool, cool. Um, can you read the tagline from one of those cards for me really quick? Uh, body cams can reduce police violence, but only by a small number are current, but only a small number are currently being used, are currently being deployed, sorry. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, so these are, that's kind of like the encompassing of the solvency portion of debate, you're basically stating how this plan solves the problem. So you can't just propose this policy action when not saying how it actually would impact the world or how it actually would solve the problem. So that's the whole reason why solvency or like the solvency cards are there to prove that this plan actually works. And then um, that's kind of going into what Enzo said previously, how they stated that, um, I think I think you said I'm blanking right now. But how the police present actually went down once body cameras were implemented? That's a solvency card because it's showing that it actually does solve the problem. So if you ever forget what solvency is, it shows how your plan solves the problem. Any questions on solvency? Perfect. Okay, we're gonna. I think we have one more group. Did the inherency group go yet? Um, yeah, I guess that's us. We're group three, but what we did, we we just looked at the um, the one AC advantage cards as well. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, we didn't really look through the cards, but we found like a point to those cards because we kind of just like went through all the evidence and stuff. No, yeah, totally. So, um, as you guys can see, like there's kind of like a blurred line between what's strictly inherency and what's strictly the advantage because they do overlap a lot. So um, if you're looking for inherency cards and it doesn't supposed to say inherency, just look at the advantage cards because they basically are one of the same. Like there, there is some distinct differences, but like 90% of the time they overlap. 
So if you're ever like, oh, I can't find any inheritance cards, just use the advantage cards. Okay, yeah. And the main one, and the main one we we're looking at was police violence is a public health issue. The consequences, the consequences spread throughout communities to create an environment of stress with cascading negative health consequences from Edwards 19. And Perfect. And it, um, do you want to explain why that's inherency? Um, it's, I th believe it's inherency because it kind of shows like what the issue is and like how it's going on around us because it's caused, it's showing it's causing public health issues in the world around us. It's like a real thing that's happening. Good. Yeah, that's like literally totally it. Um, it just shows, like I mentioned before, the status quo. What is the current political or social um, economic state of the world right now? And that is that police officers are terrorizing communities. So that's perfect. Yeah, sounds like inherency card. Anybody else want to add on? All right, perfect. So that's just like a little bit of intro onto like the affirmative side of debate in this packet for this, I think it's the whole school year we have the same packet. Um, so does anyone have any last questions?